there on that fence up there. Right. Yeah. She's still over the car. Sure. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming out to Corn Farm this afternoon. Beautiful weather. I, I can't believe after yesterday being so warm, uh, we were really blessed today with this gorgeous weather. Um, I just want to do a couple introductions first, and then I'm going to hand the microphone over to Tom. Um, we have our board members for the foundation are, are here today. Uh, Laurel Garza is here. If you could wave for us, she's in the back. She's been helping. Uh, Denise Morgan has been running around. Uh, myself, uh, David Corin. Everybody knows Dave. I think there he is. <laughs> Rick Ekstrom. Rick is back here. Uh, Dr. Ned Corin. Ned, there he is, right here. Uh, Allison Corrin is up front. Uh, Denise Burrow is right here in front. Uh, John Kupar, I don't know if John's here today. I don't see him. Uh, Judy Arman. No. Oh, and uh, Susan Bless. Susan? Over here. Over here. <laughs> And, uh, t of course, Tom Korn standing right here. And a couple other people I'd like to introduce. Uh, uh, Christian Bassana is here from the Campton Town Board. And uh, Patsy Smith is here from Campton Hills. Right here in front. And, uh, and then uh, Barb Onicki. Is Barb here? Barb, oh there she is, our Kane County board member. So if I missed anybody, I apologize, but we've got a few, quite a few people out here today. So thank you very much, and I'm going to turn the microphone over to Tom. Hey, thanks, Neil. Welcome everybody to the 175th anniversary of the Corn Farm. 175 years ago, um, it was well, it was October 1st that Robert came here. He was uh, 19 at the time out of uh, Virginia. He and Joseph, an older brother, uh, well he had a couple other brothers and a sister, and Robert and Joseph weren't very happy working with their father. Their father ran a tavern back in uh, Virginia, and he and his mom, um, well, Joseph worked in the tavern for a while and they got dissatisfied with that. and, and uh, they decided to head west. Joseph went to Michigan and met up with his uh, stepbrother, or uh, not stepbrother, his uh, brother-in-law. And uh, then he, Joseph came to settle in South Elgin. It was Clintonville at the time. So Joseph got here in the spring of 1835. And then Robert came with uh, Joseph's wife. Hannah Tucker, he got here in a, with his oxen and, and wagon and met Joseph, turned right around, went into Chicago, they got married, came back, Robert lived in a wigwam over in the Meisner farm for a while, and then built a log cabin down that way, lived in that until about 1850, and then started building this brick house, and it took four years to build. He hired a carpenter, and when the money ran out, he waited until he got more money and then made more bricks. The bricks came from out behind the dairy barn. And uh, hun over 100,000 went into this house. The walls are double thick with airspace in between. And it was completed in 1854. Now, Robert got married like in 1840 to Maria Eddy from New York. <coughs> and they had five kids. And. Uh, Maria died in 1879, and uh, then Robert remarried Barbara Ann Thompson, and that's where we come in. <laughs> they had one child, Robert Myron, and that's from Robert Myron came the Corins. Okay, so Robert Myron married Augusta Meisner in 1911, and they had three kids: Robert, Flora and uh, Kelvin. So, and that's 
Why we're here today is a dedication for them. Robert, Charles, Lucinda, his wife Lucinda, Flora Jeanette, Norton, and uh, my dad Calvin. So uh, Sally, why don't you come up and talk about the bench here. So, thanks to a generous donation from the Wasco Lady. Do we have the Wasco Ladies Aid Society here? Do we have so many folks? And they not only donated money, they donated cookies today. <laughs> More importantly. <laughs> but Sally, talk a little bit about the bench here and some memories. Yes, um, the Wasco Ladies Aid were very generous and helped us purchase a memorial bench for mom and dad. I remember dates too well. And uh, so this will always be here and be part of the history of the place. My mom and dad were married in 1946 and we lived up on the other farm uh, until I was seven years old. Grandma Corin died in 1956 and we moved in down here to be with grandpa. So we have lived most of our lives and they live most of their married life in this house. Both of them loved this home and this land and this farm and spent their lives working to make it the best it could be. So we want to remember them and every time we come we try to think of the, of the wonderful memories we had with them here. So thank you ladies aid and the rest of uh, the Corn family put in the rest and we have this now forever and we're so glad that Barbara and has Flores and Tom has Calvins and that we can remember that original group of Grandpa Myron's children. Thank you. So the bench is a donation now to the Wasco Ladies Aid, Sarah and Larry, then David, and then Bob and Jane. So they are descended from Robert Charles II. Next, we have a bench that was generously donated by the Norton family, Barb and Dick Thames, and uh, Dex and Carol Norton. They were the offspring of Flora Norton, the second oldest in that, uh, in that family. And where's Barbara? Where's okay, wander up this way. Tell us a little bit about Flora, your mom, and uh, who I remember is Aunt Peach. Aunt Peach right. um, my mom loved the outdoors, and my mom loved the fact that she could go out with Grandpa at night to the wooded area and bring in the cows for milking. She always said that was a special time when they'd take their dog and Grandpa and my mom, and the dog would go out and they'd bring in the cows for the night milking. And then she said she'd stay with Grandpa until he had some milk so she could feed all of the kittens and the cats in the barn because those were her, her pets and her favorites. So she loved that. She also loved to go to the wooded area, which maybe some of you have gone on a on the ride and had a tour back there. She said she'd love to go back there in the spring and pick flowers so that she could bring them to her mom to put on the dinner table. She also liked to take a book. She loved to read, so she would go to the wooded area, and there was one special tree she liked to lean against and read, and she said that sometimes she would sneak away and spend the whole afternoon reading a book out in the wooded area. And because Mom loved the outdoors so much, she loved to collect stones, she loved to collect bird feathers, she liked to check out flowers. Dex and I said that we thought Mom would like for us to put a bench out in the area so that when people come to enjoy this beautiful farmland, they could sit and enjoy the same thing she did. She, they could enjoy the, the birds and the, the trees and everything. So that's why Dex and I decided to uh, donate that. And we hope that all of you come and sit there and think about the fun on this farm too. I don't know, did you want to tell that one story, Dex? I didn't remember this until last night, but Dex was saying that he remembers how excited Mom got when electricity came to the house. 
because one of her Saturday jobs was to clean all the chimneys on the lanterns. And she said that, you know, that, that would be a, just a really long morning job, making sure all the soot was off of those chimneys so that they could use the, the chimneys and the lanterns the rest of the week. So electricity was her highlight. Anyway, thank you for coming, and we know you'll enjoy this home and this area, and we hope you come often. Thank you, Barbara. And lastly, uh, my dad, born in 1925, and my mom is here, Dorothy. Uh, they were married in 1953 and stuff. And, uh, <laughs> and, stuff. and we lived, in, when Sally was talking about, they lived at the other farm, and then grandma died, and they moved up here to uh, the farm here. We moved into the farm down there and grew up until like 1963 until dad and mom built the house across the way and that's where I grew up and came over here and goofed around with Dave and did a lot of things like that and learned last night you know in the history Aunt Cindy wrote about all the BB gun damage that was done by the windows <laughs> and I always thought she was talking about Dave and I but I learned last night that it was actually Bob <laughs> The stories came out that he was that he did more damage than Dave and I ever thought. Of so I'm glad to have these family get together to, to learn the real story. But you know, all three of these uh, people that we're talking about today served in the community. Um, their dad, Robert, was county supervisor from 1950. To 1977. Did I get that right? 1976 or 77? And then. Uh, 70. So it was like 20 some years. Well, I'll just say that. Okay. They're very much involved in the community as a, as a supervisor in government. Flora, we, well, we all know that Cindy did so much work putting together the family history. She wrote a, a booklet in 1976 about the camp and township. And then in all of those, she credited uh, Flora for a lot of the information about early camp and township and stuff. And uh, my dad was elected as a township supervisor in 1983 and served until his death in 86 and uh, he was a very active Cub Scout leader, Wasco Little League, that kind of stuff and helping out and played uh, baseball with your dad. Not a bad second baseman, at least hearing him talk about it. <laughs> very, and then he emceed the, uh, or he talked about family history 25 years ago when we all gathered here in this house to celebrate the 150th he talked about Grandpa Robert and a lot of stories but all of that came from the work that Aunt Cindy did we're going to fix her so last year a group of us got together to think about what can we do to preserve this, the heritage, the history for the community and that kind of thing. And so we put together the Corn Farm Preservation Society. And this is our kickoff event to tell you a little bit about us, what we're doing, and what we want to do, the hopes to continue this for the community and to uh, continue what Cindy started. And I want to thank a lot of the volunteers for putting this together. Denise, Morgan, Laurel Garza, oh, just a ton of, <laughs> oh, Denise is trying to hide over there. <laughs> Gosh, she's been out here all week and the week before that and, and fussing and fitting and the whole bit, you know, putting this together. Just a wonderful thing. And thank you so much for the time and, and stuff. And then all the folks that went together to be on the board and volunteer their time. You know, we're all paid the same, nothing. <laughs> and, uh, but with all this, with the same dream in mind, to preserve and, 
and uh, carry this on. And a lot of work has to be done here. A lot of work. A lot of work has been done. You can see by the old White House and the, mm -hmm. a lot of the buildings are cleaner and the stuff that the Boy Scouts have done, the building the wagons, and but there's much more to do. And hopefully a museum will be here and convert that into a, a theater, the Uttermax Theater from <laughs> <laughs> remembering the milking days of yesteryear. <laughs> Uh, but that's just that's Neil's dream and not mine <laughs> but anyway my family donated a, a sundial in memory of, of dad and that's in the park Perfect. and uh, if you haven't had a chance to go around to see the bench and this whatever please do so and then also the membership if you haven't signed up on the guest book please do that and then if you're a Corin, come on up. We want to get Brian or uh, Bill Warner. Say, let's see how many Corins there are here related to the Corin. So come on up if you're a Corin or related. That's a good to idea. We need a picture. That will just leave Bill and Nancy as the only ones in the audience. But, <laughs> <laughs> but then if somebody can take a picture. Absolutely. That'd be great. But thank you all for coming today.